Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on the Fair Compare Weekly Video Podcast, episode number 31. Try that very fast at home and see if you can do that. It took me a while to get that as well. On this podcast, we're going to chat a little bit about a couple of news topics. Hey, the one I haven't seen in a long time is the word free and airlines. So yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, some recent uh, um information about how long lines may be this summer, given what's been going on there. We're also going to talk a little bit about uh, some gizmos and gadgets and what to bring along on those super long flights. Uh, not my favorite thing to do, fly, you know, 10, 12 hours, 7, 8 hours, but um, it is actually fun to get there when you're there, and having a few things can make it a little bit easier. And then we're going to take a, a question from one of the folks that's written in on customer service faircompare.com, customer.service at faircompare.com. Joining me today on the video podcast is our editor from faircompare.com, Ann McDermott. Hey, Ann. Hey, Rick. So how often does an airline drop a fee? Uh, I'm trying to figure out the last time I remember it, actually. Um, you know, I... I I, you know, usually when they merge, sometimes they raise fees. I haven't seen a lot of raising of fees lately, but I certainly haven't been, haven't seen a bunch of dropping of fees, especially in the airline fee generation. Remember, uh, bag fees at about three billion, all the other fees in combination, seven billion last year. So this is a lot of money when they talk about these fees. So, but Delta, <coughs> Delta dropped a fee. Yeah, no, Delta Airlines dropping their phone call fee. I, 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 I hate to call it a reservation fee because it also includes if you want to change your ticket, they were charging that fee as well. So basically, if you want to talk to a human, uh, now no longer a fee for that. Now, Southwest hasn't had a fee for uh, talking to a human in a while. Now, the main reason for this fee, uh, you know, being it's been around for, gosh, probably... I think that that was instituted about a year after the, the first check bag fee, so that's uh, the spring of 2008, so that's been around, what, six or seven years now, Long is time. that people have learned not to make a phone call unless they have to, um, so I think they've trained people for six or seven years, uh, and the fact that airlines uh, have some pretty serious profits lately, so they probably looked at this, the bean counters, the marketing folks looked at it and said, hey, you know what, this, isn't, this, this particular dropping of the fee is going to give us some good press, hey, we're checking about it. We're talking about it at the at the moment as well, and it's you know it's not going to hurt the bottom line too much. Now I will note I would be surprised if the uh, the other major legacy airlines, America and American and United, don't drop their fees here in the next few weeks or so. Well, as you point out, it's probably a fee that wasn't bringing in much money because you know we've all learned you don't call the airline anymore. However, I did have a very tricky situation with a Delta ticket that I needed to change not too long ago, and I called them, and this was before the fee was announced as being dropped, and I was not charged. And I will say also, I spoke to a wonderful person at Delta, so. Uh, you know, sometimes talking to a human really can make a big difference. Yeah, the last year or so, Ann, I don't know how many different times we've had some sort of weather-related issue or yeah. uh, an issue, you know, like we saw with a, a terrorist incident when the first thing the airlines had to say is they're waiving the, the call-in fee <laughs> yeah. or they're waiving, you know, a variety of fees. So, I mean, from a PR perspective, it makes no sense to start every version of things as we're waiving this current fee. <laughs> So I, I get now they can they don't even have to say it they can say just give us a call and we'll change your ticket right um, so I would be surprised if the other airlines don't match because they feel like you know that's sort of an interesting competitive disadvantage now Southwest hasn't charged a fee in a long time the the, the other three legacy airlines uh, clearly haven't thought that that was a big issue Spirit Airlines I think charges thirty five dollars yeah. to actually talk to a human so look I mean we're all getting more familiar with our phones with the, with computers. Booking tickets now has been around for almost, well, I guess the first website sort of showed up in 2002, 2003. So a lot of people are trained on how to be their own travel agent nowadays. Okay, uh, let's move on. That was the good news, a fee being dropped. <laughs> the bad news is if you show up at the airport a little bit late or at your usual normal time, 
you could be in for a big right. surprise. We've talked about this before. I'm I'm a slider into the airport at the last minute if possible. Uh, my wife is a let's get there three and a half four hours early. <laughs> <laughs> especially on international flights. Um, um, so, um, but you know, the, the interesting thing, and, and I'm, and I, I can't slide in after hearing what's happening here in the summertime. This is, sort of goes back to. Um, it starts off with. Uh, the pre-check program, uh, sort of historically, they were hoping to sign up about 25 million Americans. Now remember, about 2 million of us fly each day in the U.S. Uh, they only signed up about a third of that amount. Now, yeah. and, and so that's one problem. So they have uh, expedited lines, but nobody in them. Then they started plucking people out randomly and giving them pre-check, depending on your boarding pass. Uh, and then a couple, uh, well, at least one known uh, uh, domestic terrorist actually made it into the pre-check line. And um, you know they they tried yeah. uh, you basically bringing a bunch of different things through security that made it through those things. So now they had to stop that. At the same time, they actually dropped about 10% of the the folks that are actually doing the security check-in, expecting the, a lot of people to be in pre-check, which actually can push people through twice as fast as the other method. With all that as the backdrop, lots of summer ticket sales coming, lots of people. Some airports, it's going to be crazy long, hour and a half to two hour lines in some cases. You do not want to miss your flight. Uh, it, I've been flying a lot lately, and just about a, a month ago, okay, I went to the airport at 5 a.m. because I had a 6 a.m. flight. You don't anticipate uh, many lines there. I was strolled in and I was shocked at the line. I was shocked and I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I was clearly going to miss my flight. <coughs> And I hand my uh, printed out uh, boarding pass to the TSA guy, and he goes, "Oh, you're in pre-check." And I go, oh, "Yes, yes. Saved. I was saved." Score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know what? I can't. You cannot count on that. Obviously, you. Well, look. Here's sign the right up. thing to do. You know, if you're flying internationally, global entry, which includes pre-checks, hundred dollars for five years. Pre-checks eighty dollars. You do have to to do an interview. I hear the I, the interview I went to was I think three questions, and that was for global entry. I actually got my daughter involved with that at, at the age of nine uh, with that. So uh, you know the entire family. Uh, so um, we actually are traveling with some friends later this summer. They all join global entry. <laughs> so we're all on the same page when it comes to getting back, not only <clears throat> when you're leaving, but getting back from an international des destination when you're coming through customs and immigration. So certainly something uh, you can do. I, the you know, setting up interviews doesn't take as long now. Clearly, the the the, the wave of signing up is over. So look for that and try to try to sign up for pre-check. If you fly more than twice a year, it's worth your effort. And, and just to be clear, that global entry, which is great for international travel, does include pre-check. That's included in it free. It so. does, yeah. So you get both. So um, you know, when you get back from immigration, you put your hand on a fingerprint scanner, and then you're off to the races okay. while everybody else is going through those. And there's nothing in like having about 10 or 20 triple sevens dump people out simultaneously and watch okay. what happens at immigration and custom. It's it's it can be very very painful. I've been uh, you know before they had global entry, you know our and a half, two hours in some cases. So inbound and out and returning, uh, I mean outbound and inbound, you're going to have the same issue. So get that global entry if you fly uh, more than a couple times internationally. Well, speaking of long haul flights, and this is you know this is my idea of a subtle transition segue. Uh, there are certain things that I think everybody knows that you've got to have on a, a, a long-haul flight. We're going to be writing about this this week, and we've been collecting, as you know, uh, everybody's ideas on, on <laughs> what you got to have. And, of course, we have the all-important snacks. Now, I, you know, these are granola bar snacks and your cords and your entertainment and your, whoa, you know, Pillow. I hope it's not as big as this one. But yeah, I really, I really like I, I like the pillow that that wraps around your entire head that makes you look like a, a <laughs> semi alien. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things that, that's important to me is I love to listen to music when I'm flying. Um, sometimes I'll listen to an audio book, depending on how loud it is on the plane. Um, Bose uh, sound-canceling headsets are great, like the ones I have 
here on, but if you're going to be <clears throat> sleeping with your headsets on, then you also want to bring your earbuds as well because those are not very easy to sleep on. If you try to put your ear down, not super comfortable. Uh, certainly having a pillow of some sort, uh, depending on if you're flying in, in coach or premium economy or business class can be very helpful as well. Uh, you know, chargers, battery, sometimes conversion kits. If you're going to be flying internationally on a different carrier, they may or may not have U.S.-based conversion stuff. So all that stuff is super important. Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? You know, it depends. I have like six or seven different lists, so I'll pick uh, uh, some country sometimes. I'll pick some reggae. I also have some some pop. Uh, so, you know, I also like to listen to 70s rock, 80s rock. Um, I, I just got back from uh, a couple weeks ago, well, I guess three or four weeks ago, from an ACDC concert, so I'm just now getting my hearing back. <laughs> You can tell what I like to listen to. <laughs> Somebody told me that they always bring, uh, they always make sure to watch Airplane on the plane. And I'm thinking, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah assume the crash position is probably the best scene ever in, in, in a movie. So um, so you'll have to go watch Airplane to catch that reference, the, the movie. I know that a lot of folks that watch the video podcast have probably seen it a few times. Uh, we have a question from uh, one of our Fair Compare readers, and uh, it's a good question. It's a two-part question from Charlie in Denver. So he says, I've got a mountain bike race in the French Alps, how nice, in August, wow. and I need to book my travel from Denver to Geneva. Uh, and his question is twofold. He says, is it more cost-effective to break up that kind of a flight say Denver to a large East Coast airport and then that airport on to Geneva or does it matter and then his second question is are certain carriers more accommodating with large check-in items like a bag that will contain my bike and uh, this is he adds this is his first international race and he says, I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, actually, I think you do because you're asking the questions. Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> let's tackle this sort of in two pieces. Um, on the bike trail, the good news is that my co-founder has uh, a huge cyclist and who has taken his bike to Europe several times uh, to ride, uh, not in a race, but bef before and after, uh, for example, the Tour de France. So I'm quite familiar, and he actually lives in Dur Durango, Colorado. So oh, Denver perfect. is sort of in the glide path there, since United is is the airline that would be international choice. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I would note is likely um, Charlie is probably part of a bike club or some sort of club probably in the Denver area. I know um, uh, my co-founder in Durango also has this, and from time to time airlines will provide free coupons so you can actually transfer your bike at no cost. Now that's typically a fairly expensive charge, oversized baggage charge in some cases. Um, Charlie probably has a really nice case for his bike. I've seen, you know, with nice padding, you can basically take the, the bike apart into several sections, uh, pack it up nicely. So United is very very accommodating in this particular area. So I know um, that my, my co-founder has done this several times. And so check with them. Also, in some cases, if you have elite status uh, on, if you're traveling to international races, you might have elite status, especially out of Denver, on United. And they also have some special fees waived for those particular things. So you might check that out as well, Charlie. But uh, feel safe that your bike will make it there. <clears throat> now, as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm, lo I'm losing my voice here. Well, let me just throw in while you're uh, getting your voice back that it, on a lot of airlines uh, for bikes, it seems to be f uh, 50 pounds is a key uh, level, a tier, and they let you consider it as a regular checked bag if it's if the bike and its case is under 50 pounds but you may be dinged for a higher charge if it's over that. So Yeah, if Charlie has a mountain bike like I think he does in an international race, mm -hmm. you can hold it up with one finger. Wow. <laughs> so some wow. of these bikes are really, really carbon fiber craziness. So <clears throat> he's probably going to be okay there. As far as the, the ticket part of this deal, whether or not you actually want to go to Denver to the East Coast and then on to Switzerland, um, it all depends on the days you want to go and the prices. Um, it, it typically is much cheaper to fly out of the East Coast. Now, if you want to hack a ticket and take a low-cost airline like Southwest to the East Coast, you probably wouldn't end up at JFK, which is probably where your flight is. So you'd be looking at some of the air, other airlines and potentially to get there. 
as well. So it's possible, but they probably wouldn't do as good a job with your bike. So probably you want to go ahead and, and get that Denver to Geneva uh, using a, a United ticket. Um, I know that they do have some flights um, out of Denver into Atlanta, for example. If you want to fly Delta, you can also fly to Dallas as well if you want to fly American. So I check all three. Um, most of them probably do the same thing with your bike. Check all three. If you want to hack your ticket, make sure that ticket price has to be under a thousand dollars in order to hack it from Denver to New York stay for example you'd have to take your bags out you'd have to take your bike un undo it all if you had to hack it so I definitely would you know for me unless the, the savings was several hundred dollars I definitely would go ahead and take the through ticket so you're saying he should fly to, well to <coughs> Europe from Denver yeah. he shouldn't try to break it up yeah, I think that's probably the best bet. Now, the day you go is important. Uh, Midweek flights are much cheaper than weekend flights internationally. Um, there are, you know, June 10th. They didn't say, did he say which dates he was going on? Just I didn't August. See. Yeah, so um, if it's later in August, prices drop in the last week in August. If it's early August, uh, you need to start looking and booking that ticket right now. Try to do it midweek. Uh, look through all three carriers. They're going to have similar uh, capabilities to get your bike there. And then uh, look at that. And if the if you can hack a price, you'd have to get a price from Denver to the East Coast, probably in the $150 to $200 range, and your ticket out, out of the East Coast to Switzerland under 1000 Very tough to do early August. Late August, the price will be uh, much cheaper. Is, is there a date in August when prices kind of fall? Heading yeah, it's, a, it's around August the 25th uh, historically, so that's when the prices tend to fall. It's basically the last week in August. Sometimes it's August the 20th. Um, we'll have to go. I, I think we, we did a little research on that. I don't know exactly when that date is, but basically it's the last week in August when that okay. price drops dramatically. Well, good luck in your race, and we, we <laughs> hope you have a great time. Hey, and Charlie, get a cheap thumbs ticket. up. Yeah, let, be sure and send us a note and tell, you how, tell us how you do on the race. Maybe we'll catch you on ESPN. And if anybody else has a, a question for us, please submit it to customer.service at faircompare.com, and Rick will answer it. Yeah, don't also check out the Fair Compare app, uh, faircompare.com slash app, the Adventurist app. Uh, some new destinations added. I think we're up to 160 some odd now. Yeah. Uh, check those out. Some interesting places to go. I know I've been checking it out. I've I've actually hearted a few of them uh, that I have on my bucket list now, and I'm watching the prices there. So check that out um, on both Android and Apple products. Oh, and our Instagram account has got some gorgeous photos. It really does. Yeah, it does. So check that out as well. So uh, again, we're going to close off episode 31. Let's hopefully see you for episode 32. And thanks for watching our video podcast. Thanks, Rick.